All right. So because the angle is already given, so we can directly draw the free body diagram of the mass. Oops. We have a downward gravity. So there is a tension in the cable. Let's name it the FL. Okay, so let's recall the Ola second law. The torque equals to mass moment of inertia times theta double dot. So we need to find out when there is a point mass dangling around a point O, what that J is. So you can go back to the table. That's the simplest case we have here, okay? So your I is just the mass times the distance squared. So that means in this case, your J is the mass times the distance L squared, all right? So theta double dot, theta is the unknown, so we have to leave it there. So the other thing is we just need to find the torque. So this torque is around the pinpoint. So as you can see that your FL, because it passes through this point O, so that means the tension force is not gonna create any torque. And then you just focus on the gravity. So this angle is gonna be theta. And then you can easily decompose your gravity into two parts, Fy and Fx. So X is along the tangential direction. So you can see that your Fy is cosine theta mg. Your Fx is sine theta mg. And then as I said, because your Fy passes through the pinpoint O, so these generates no torque. So the torque is only from Fx. And then you can see that your torque T equals to Fs, Fx times the length of the arm, which is directly the length of the wire, okay? So whenever you derive a torque, remember to ask yourself, is positive or negative? That's very critical. So in this case, do you think it's negative or positive? Okay, I got a positive. So negative. any negatives? Negative. Okay, I think I got a mixed uh, opinion. So no worries, because it's a review class. Uh, let's review this. So let's look at this force, your Fx. If you just look at the Fx, is it gonna pull your mass clockwise or counterclockwise? So if you just focus on this Fx, this force is trying to pull your mass back to the center, right? So that's the motion it wants to create. So that means it creates a clockwise rotation, because it creates a clockwise rotation, that means it's gonna be negative. So remember, you have to add a negative sign over there. So this is a very effective method when you have only 2D motions. But if you have 3D motions, then you have to check the right hand rule. That's because in that case, your torque is gonna be the force cross product your display your position vector so that's that applies for the 3d case so in this class i try to stay in 2d only so if you're interested in 3d you can check this right hand rule and i think it's available on wikipedia all right so if you know how to do, use the right hand rule you can also do it in here so that means your f X is pointing to this direction. Your R vector, which is this vector, that's your R vector, is pointing to that direction. And then you use the right hand rule. That means your four fingers, like 
your forefinger all the way to the small finger, these four fingers together, trying to follow these paths, okay? And then the direction of the stun is the direction of the torque. So that means in this case, your torque is pointing into the play. So if your torque is into the play or into the paper, that means it's negative. If your thumb is pointing out of play, that means your torque is positive. That's the other way to, te uh, to tell if you got a positive or negative torque. So, so if you want to learn that, you can check the right hand rule over there, okay? So let's sum these together. We have FXL, so your torque is minus sine theta MGL equals to ML squared theta double dot. So that's your equation of motion. So for convenience, we usually move all the unknowns to one side, and then all the no constant values on the right. In this case, the constant value is zero. 